right, begin. What's going on y'all and welcome back to the channel. I hope each and every one of you are doing well today. Now before we get started I want to ask you guys a favor. If you don't mind go ahead and punch that like button and also smash that share button so we can get this channel recognized you dig. And if you're on social media you can follow me on Instagram at nctubtv. That's a for sure way that we can stay connected all right. Now with all of that said let's go ahead and get down to business because I want to talk about this strange situation that's going on right. So we just had two former beauty pageants in Chelsea Chris and Zoe Bethel to actually leave us prematurely and something is just not right in my estimation about this whole thing. You know something is just eccentric and mystifying and incongruous about how they went out. Now it's not above the realm of possibility because it doesn't matter if you're a beauty pageant, it doesn't matter if you work a 9 to 5, and it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor because depression and mental health issues are not prejudice, right? And so once depression sets in it can become unmanageable and ungovernable and some people are fortunate to find solutions to be able to cope with it on a day-to-day -day basis and others are not so lucky now i have to be honest when things like this happen to celebrities and people that are in the entertainment business i tend to look at it and judge it a bit differently because some people will engage in dubious and otherworldly things just to get to where they want to be i mean some of them sacrifice a lot even if it means sacrificing themselves. Now, I'm not saying that this is what went down involving these two beautiful ladies. They could have very well had people around them that were just evil and sinister and were plotting the whole time for whatever reason. And I'm referring to people that are not a part of the industry. I'm talking about people that are in their everyday circle, like friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, and things of that nature. Now, let me go ahead and put this out here, right? And I know I'm gonna have a few people to drop down in the comments and be like, oh Lord, here we go, another conspiracy theorist, right? Listen, I just don't believe that the information in regards to how Chelsea and Zoe left us prematurely, I just don't find it to be circumstantial or accurate. So let me discuss Chelsea's background. So Chelsea was born on April the 28th, 1991 in a place called Jackson, Michigan. When she was a young girl, her father, Rodney Chris, and her mother, April Simpkins, picked up the family and moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. They were shortly moved to Rock Hill, South Carolina. It was there where Chelsea attended Northwestern High School, but the family ended up moving again to Fort Mill, South Carolina, and then Chelsea transferred to Fort Mill High School graduating in 2009. Soon thereafter, Chelsea decided to move to Columbia, South Carolina to attend the Honors College at the University of South Carolina. She ended up graduating from Dollar Moore School of Business with a degree in Marketing and Human Resource Management in 2013. After Chelsea completed her undergrad degree, she moved to Winston-Salem, North Carolina and enrolled in Wake Forest University School of Law. Chelsea ended up graduating with a Juris Doctor and an MBA in 2017. It wasn't too long after after that, when Chelsea became licensed to practice law in both the states of North Carolina and South Carolina, and her main objective and goal was to free inmates that were wrongfully imprisoned. And most importantly, what's so touching about this whole particular story is the fact that she would spend her precious time helping these inmates for free. So what I want to do right here is implement a couple of clips of Chelsea explaining what it was for her to be a lawyer and how she was disrespected and violated to the 10th power. She also goes into great detail about some other things. So just sit tight and I'll be right back. Number one, I just really like what I do now. I'm a correspondent and TV host. I work on extra and so I get to interview really interesting people all the time. Like just in the last few weeks, some of the people I interviewed were Denzel Washington, Mariah Carey, and Alicia Keys, and they were all so nice. I was a correspondent at Miss Universe in December and in May. I do speaking engagements. And so part of it is just, I really love the stuff that I do now. My second reason is billable hours are trash. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. If y'all really want to know about billable hours, just let me know and I'll make a separate video, but it's, it's a lot and it's a big reason. My third reason is just the general lack of diversity in the legal profession and the constant microaggressions because of it. Now that can be said about a lot of different industries, but for some reason it just felt worse in the legal profession. For example, I remember once walking into a deposition, which is basically just like a formal interview 
of a person. So I'm a lawyer interviewing somebody on the record. And the court reporter was sitting in the room when I walked in. I think she was the only one there. And uh, I walk in and sit down. She's like, do you know when the lawyers are getting here? Well, I'm here, so the lawyers are here. And I think what made me the most upset about that last instance was like, I, w I walk into this room with my suit on and this giant bag full of documents that I then start taking out of my bag so I can ask the person I'm uh, deposing about this information. I'm like, what client or lay person <laughs> walks into a deposition with all this stuff? They walk in with themselves and Jesus. That's it. And it's not just me with these experiences. Like if you look up Brian Stevenson, who was the lawyer that Michael B. Jordan played in that movie, Just Mercy, Brian Stevenson, he had the same thing or he had a similar thing happen to him where he walked into a courtroom and a judge was like, sir, you don't need to be sitting at counsel table without your lawyer. And he's like, um, your honor, I, I'm the lawyer, sir. Thank you. Microaggressions that I have experienced. I've been told I'm pretty for a black girl, although that one is closer to just being outright racist. I've been told I was articulate, which sounds like a compliment, but frequently black people hear this and what it sounds like to us is you didn't expect that I could speak clearly because I'm a black person. And now that you're surprised, you feel like you're giving me a compliment because you're telling me I'm articulate. Instead, just say something like, I like how you made that point because then it actually shows that you're listening to the words coming out of my mouth versus sitting in awe that a black person can speak normally. I've had random people I do not know just walk up to me and touch my hair. It makes me feel like I'm a pet or that the hair growing out of my head is so out of the ordinary that you just absolutely had to touch it. Just ask. I'll almost always say no, but I think it's important to respect somebody's personal space and just ask before you touch their hair. I was asked on a date with a white guy if I knew my dad, which felt like he was assuming that like black people don't know our fathers. When I was still practicing law, there were people who would like list off a bunch of black people that they knew and ask me if I knew them, thinking that like all black people must know each other or that we don't have mutual friends who are non-black. One white lawyer always wanted to introduce me to people, but every person he introduced me to was another black person. Like, I guess he would meet black people and just think you need to meet other black people. I think he just thought he was helping me to network, but I just... I can meet plenty of people within our community who I can network with. In many courthouses in North Carolina, you cannot bring your laptop or cell phone into the courthouse unless you're an attorney. And there were many times that I would be stopped at security and I would tell security like, look, I have my laptop and cell phone, I'm an attorney. And they would ask to see my bar card, which looks like this. My license is currently inactive, so obviously this, this is old because I no longer practice law. Um, but if I was accompanied by a white attorney from my law firm, we would just have to tell security that we were attorneys and they would let us in. All right, so you heard what Chelsea had to say and you heard her describe some of the impudent things that happened to her. And I can see that having a psychological effect on her in a negative way, coupled with all the adversity and criticism that she faced when she won Miss North Carolina and Miss America in 2019. Now, Chelsea did allude to the fact that a lot of people trolled her and said that she wasn't pretty enough to be Miss USA and that she had a man body. Now, I could definitely see how those cruel words could rattle someone's mental capacity, but it doesn't definitely mean that it's plausible that it will push her to the point that she would want to end everything. Now, Chelsea's mom, April Simpkins, was her inspiration to compete in beauty pageants because Chelsea's mom actually won Miss North Carolina back in 2002. Now, Chelsea's mom was undoubtedly devastated about the loss of her daughter and rightfully so. Now, Chelsea's mom posted a lengthy tribute to her daughter and yeah, that's to be expected, correct? And so I'm just gonna read you the most important portion in my opinion. So she said, today what our family and friends probably knew was the cause of passing of my sweet baby girl Chelsea was officially confirmed. While it may be hard to believe, it's true. Chelsea led both a public and private life. In her private life, she was dealing with high functioning depression, which she hid from everyone, including me, her closest confidant, 
until very shortly before her passing. So Chelsea's mom made it clear that she had conversations with her daughter about her high functioning depression that she was struggling with privately. And so a person who's suffering from high functioning depression is sort of in the same lane as a person who's suffering from being a high functioning alcoholic. An alcoholic may drink every day, but they still get up to go to work and pay their bills. Now you can say that what alcohol means to a person who is an alcoholic is what work meant to Chelsea who was suffering from high functioning depression. And so an alcoholic who drinks every day may just drink because they like the way it makes them feel. They may drink because they're suffering from a loss within their family, a loved one, a husband or a wife, you know, that led to depression. And so they depend on alcohol to get them through whatever they're going through mentally, right? And so in Chelsea's case, it's not above the realm of possibility that instead of her turning to alcohol, she actually turned to work to soothe her depression. Now, I would be interested to know if Chelsea did talk to someone else about her depression, like a boyfriend, like a girlfriend, and you know, her mom just didn't simply know about Chelsea had those particular people in her life. Because I say that to say this, sometimes people prey on your weaknesses. And so if she was talking to someone else behind the scenes that Chelsea mom didn't know about, and that particular person knew that Chelsea was talking to her mom about her depression, it could later on be very well used as a cover up based off the fact that Chelsea mom knew that she was suffering from depression and the way that Chelsea went out. Her mom is automatically going to think that it was because or due to the depression that her and her daughter was having conversations about behind the scenes without thinking twice that someone may have had ill intentions towards your daughter. So I just think that we need to dot every I and cross every damn T. Now, another thing that I find interesting that may or may not mean anything is just an observation. All right. Is that Chelsea posted this beautiful picture of herself about two years ago. And she said that highlight, though trying to show Bay, I really do light up his life. And so I have the same question that people in the comments were asking and they were like, who is Bay? Who is Bay? Because she never really posted a picture of anybody that she was dating. Now, I want you to pay close attention because someone in the comments came to the same conclusion or they're thinking in the same realm that I'm thinking in. They said the same photo as her last post, Bay with a question mark and an exclamation mark. Now, how ironic and eerie that it is that this picture right here ended up being the last post that was made to Chelsea's account. And so she used the same picture that she used two years ago when she was saying, hey, I'm just trying to show Bay that I light up his life. But the caption on this post says, may this day bring you rest and peace. So my question is, did Chelsea actually post this to her account? Did anybody have access to her Instagram or any of her social media? That's what's going through my mind. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that Chelsea alluded to the fact that she was always being followed, right? And, you know, it probably has something to do with her status. She did win Miss North Carolina and Miss America back in 2019, but it was unpleasant for her because she was trying to work on this particular day. Let me go ahead and show you this clip. What should we do about this? Oh my God, this creep is following us. Is he still following us? I don't want to shoot with him. <laughs> it is so creepy and weird. We can just wait until he leaves. Let's just start walking. And he's gonna he's gonna keep following us. Sir, we're just trying to work. Please don't follow us. Please don't you are following us. And it's so rude and creepy. Just keep going with your dog. We don't need you to follow us. Uh, because you're following us. What do you mean? Why do I feel uncomfortable? Because you're following us. Keep walking then. Then why are you stopped when we're stopped? Your dog wants to go over there. Go. If you want me to leave, I'll leave. Leave. Please leave. Do whatever. Just leave. Because it's creepy. Leave. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Well, it's it's it, well, it's terrible to see creep. Stop following us. I'm not following you, sister. Okay, then stay here while we go a different way, or walk away. Oh my 
What a creep. Let's just go this way. All right. So Chelsea had this to say following the altercation. She said, I can make a highlight reel full of creepy men who harass me on camera. I say men and not people because I have literally never had a woman behave this way. Whether it's following me and the crew, I'm in Central Park and in Charlotte shouting expletives at me in Times Square or interrupting my work to shove a camera in my face and take photos of me in Midtown. It's always uncomfortable, creepy and unwelcome. It's one thing to see a camera crew and curiously watch from afar. It's quite another to follow someone from place to place, yelling to the camera when they talk and refuse to leave them alone when asked. Now, this isn't the first instance where Chelsea has voiced her displeasure for being followed. This is just one that she was fortunate to catch on video. Now, I know that this took place in the day, but if this type of harassment can take place in the day, what in the world can go on at night? We all know. You know, who was this dude following her? You know? It's imperative that you just do a thorough investigation and again, dot every I and cross every T. Now, Chelsea left us prematurely on January the 30th and there was a celebration of life held in Charlotte, North Carolina on February the 18th. And I'm told that it was immaculate and very heartfelt and a lot of people were devastated because Chelsea did make a powerful impact on a lot of people in the state of North Carolina, in the state of South Carolina and worldwide. She was just a very beautiful person inside and out. Now, what I want to do is transition to the next story. And I want to talk about Zoe Bethel. Now, Zoe Bethel was born in Miami, Florida on October the 20th, 1994. Her mother, Glennis Bethel, and her father, Orlando Brown, were evangelists in the church. So it's safe to say that Zoe and her brother, Zion Bethel, had a Christian upbringing. And to my knowledge, with the research that I did, they both were homeschooled. They did not attend any public schools. And as a matter of fact, there's a lack of information detailing if Zoe actually attended college after being homeschooled. But anyway, she grew up to be a model. She ended up winning Miss Alabama in 2021. She was also a broadcaster host and a conservative commentator. Now, a lot of people within my community that have the same hue as me are not fond of her because of her views. Now, when you go and take a look at her Instagram page, it's drenched with her support for 45. And so a lot of people do not like the controversial things that she has said in the past. She reminds you of a Candace Owens, so to speak. But in all honesty, whether you agree with her political affiliation or not, it shouldn't matter right now. What should matter is the fact that we have two beauty pageants that are the same hue as me that are going out in the same fashion and we need to figure out why now it is important to note that zoe did share a daughter with a guy by the name of brennan franklin who currently lives in spanish fort alabama and his education is in accounting and finance now the daughter name is jesse vana now some reports say that they were married other reports say they were just a couple right they were just boyfriend and girlfriend but at the time of her passing, they were definitely separated. Now, on February the 18th, it was confirmed that Zoe Bethel had prematurely left this world due to a car accident, right? And so that was the initial report. Now, before I go any further, let me point this out. The very same day that Zoe Bethel passed away is the very same day that Chelsea Chris celebration of life was held in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I just find that to be very unsettling and extremely bone chilling that those two incidents took place on the same day. Now, like I said previously, the initial report stated that Zoe was in some type of car accident, but it came out later that she actually had an accident or they're calling it an accident. And it took place at her high rise condo building in Miami, Florida. So the only difference between Chelsea Chris and the situation that happened to Zoe is that they're saying that what happened to Chelsea Chris is deliberate, right? While painting the picture that Zoe's incident was just an accident. Now, what the two women have in common is the fact that they both fell from a high rise until the two checked out. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, right? So you understand where I'm coming from. I'm pretty sure you do. You guys are smart enough to put two and two together. And so that's what they have in common. Now, let me read to you all what was posted to Zoe's Instagram account three days ago. So it says on Friday, February the 18th at approximately 530 a.m. Eastern time in Miami, Florida, our beloved Zoe Sozo Bethel passed from this life into the next as a result of succumbing to her injuries. Zoe touched the hearts of many people and was actively affiliated with several organizations and groups. Namely, she was the current Miss Alabama for America Strong. 
a political commentator for RSBN, a brand ambassador for Turning Point USA, and Liberty University's Falkirk Center. She was also a spokeswoman for Students for Life and affiliated with Project Veritas. At this time of bereavement, effectual and fervent prayers are solicited for the family members and the family asks that their privacy wishes be honored and respected. The family members sincerely appreciate all the kind words and expressions of love for Zoe. For those who would like to show additional support, you may click on the link above. This support will help cover medical and burial arrangement costs for Zoe. Additional information about burial arrangements and other matters will be provided at a later date by the family. Please send any images, thoughts, and prayers, and etc. to zoebethel2022 at gmail.com. Now, Zoe does have a link on our Instagram page, a GoFundMe link, and they're asking for donations to help cover funeral costs, also help cover medical bills and things of that nature because Zoe did not have health insurance. They're also asking people to support and donate to help Zoe's daughter, you know, and her future life, whether it be education and things of that nature. Now, there's a couple of things that I find funny. And the first thing that I find funny is the amount $500,000. Now, I don't work in medical billing or coding, but I just think that's a little steep of an asking price to support someone that, you know, of course, she has a daughter and the daughter should be rightfully supported by those who choose to support her daughter and her daughter's future education. But Zoe's daughter still has her father. Right. And according to reports, her father has a good paying job. So I'm a little murky about the five hundred thousand dollars. It seems like somebody else is trying to get paid. Somebody else is trying to profit off of this loss. Now, another question that I have is who in the world is Santiago Roman? right that's identifying themselves to be a family member of zoe then on top of that the same person santiago is the organizer for this fundraiser so i looked and looked and looked and tried to find some affiliation with the name santiago roman and i didn't find any type of relationship that zoe bethel or her family could be related to in regards to this individual right here so is this a boyfriend you know who is this who is this person right that's claiming to be Zoe's family member. Now, it could very well be a family member. But who is this person right here? Isaac239. Now, he has the GoFundMe link to, you know, Zoe's GoFundMe foundation or whatever the case may be posted on his page as well. Now, he refers to her as a sister, but clearly, you know, he's just speaking in terms like they could be just potentially close or was potentially close. But he definitely has the link on his page, right? So that's strange to me because Zoe's own brother Zion doesn't even have the link on his page and he's her blood relative. You know, I don't know y'all. I just don't believe it. It's something extremely fishy about this whole situation, you know, dealing with Chelsea and dealing with, you know, Zoe. I just don't believe everything that's coming out in regards to this situation. The one word that keeps coming to my mind is the word calculated. Like this is a calculated strategic plan or some type of ritual and it was time for the devil to come and to collect i'm just keeping it real like something is off about it now right when i was about to end this video something told me to go back to zoe's brother's page his name is zion right and so i went back to the page and i think i found who santiago roman might be because i found this picture and i clicked on you know who zion may have tagged and it says s roman so when you go to his page it's on private now the first question that comes to my mind is why is your account on private has your account always been on private or did you just receive some backlash for the amount that you set the gofundme up for in the amount of five hundred thousand dollars for zoe bethel and people are questioning you right and another thing that just dawned on me is the fact that her brother has yet to pay any type of tribute to her on his instagram account he has said nothing now i know that people definitely mourn in different ways you know i'm pretty sure that he's probably still in shock and he doesn't want to accept the fact that his sister is gone so that could be a reason but you know i look at things like that you know i'm just my observation but anyway i'm gonna let this go right here this already has been a very long video and so i'm gonna let this go right here and let y'all slide in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this whole entire situation don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.